Hi, welcome back to Mr. Stewart's lessons. Um, today we're going to continue our maze lesson and add a randomly moving opponent in a maze. So, what we're going to do first is I'm going to I'm going to take a uh, a slightly modified version of the maze that we created last. I've actually changed this maze, so you might want to uh, download the newer version from Mr. Stewart's lessons or modify it yourself. The main thing that I've done is I've made sure that uh, there is basically no open spaces. Everything is a straight path. If you notice here, um, it's it's not absolutely necessary, but I think that my randomly moving opponent is going to work better. So you'll notice basically that is I don't have anything like this, which would be an open space here. Um, so uh, I want to make sure that, uh, that this would be like a big open square. I want to make sure that all my spaces are completely closed off. That is, we just have that the, there's only a path about as wide as one of the walls there. Um, there's no big open spaces. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to make a actor. I'm going to make a new actor. I'm going to add a, a new subclass called cat. Um, surprisingly hard to find a good image of a cat walking uh, from the top. Uh, fortunately, I happen to have a real cat, and this is an image of my cat from the top. Her name's uh, Lucy, if you're curious. And uh, so this is my cat uh, we're doing from the top here. What we want her to do is we want her to move around random, fairly randomly in the maze. Basically, she's gonna when she hits a wall, she's going to turn a random direction. It's the easiest way to do it. So um, first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to take the get wall in front method in the mouse, which I already created. Um, this is in my previous lesson. If you want to go do that, it's lesson 22. If you want to see how I did it, this is the get wall in front method. I'm going to copy it. And I'm going to paste that in the cat. Now, uh, this isn't quite going to work yet. I'm going to have to add one thing. Um, I, it, you'll notice. Uh, You'll say distance to front equals my image dot get width divided by two. My image is the image of the cat, but I never actually got the image of the cat. Um, so I'm just going to add that in here. Um, so I'm going to say um, green foot image my image equals get image. Just to review what this does really quick. Um, this so once I have my image, I uh, find how far it is to the front of my image and um, this X offset and Y offset is using the cosine and sine trigonometric ratios to turn my uh, direction which uh, the rotation of my the my rotation which I get here into a direction in an X and Y direction to make sure that I'm looking in the front and then it just sees if there's a wall in front of me and if the wall is, if there is a wall in front of me, it'll um, it'll tell me that there's no there's a wall in front of me. So, uh, so that's um, my uh, get wall in front method. So now what I want to do is basically, if there is a wall in front, I want to um, if there is a wall in front, I want to make if there's no wall in front I want to move if there is a wall in front I want to turn randomly so I'm gonna go up here and I'm gonna put an if statement and I'm gonna say if get wall in front equals equals false so that means there is no wall in front of me then I'm going to want to move and let's say five we don't want him to move too fast or we'll never be able to get away from this crazy cat so if there is if there is no wall in front of me I'm going to move forward five that's an if statement um, a shortcut to doing that if you if you like shortcuts is just to put an exclamation point in front of it this is this is what get, it, this means not get wall in front which means false but I'm gonna leave it how it I did it just so it's clear because people are learning here and we want to make sure that we understand what we're saying else that means if there is 
is a wall in front of me, what I want to do is I want to turn a random direction. Um, there's three ways I could turn. Where I could turn left, I could turn right, or I could turn back and walk back the way I came. So let's make it all three options possible. So that means there's three, since there's three possible ways I could go, I'm going to get a, a random number from uh, three random numbers, which in math would be zero through two because we're talking about programming. We always start counting at zero. So I'll say int r n d equals green foot. This is how we get a random number if you haven't done this before. And one of the green foot, one of the methods available in green foot is get random number. There's, there it is right here. So there's three possible choices, three possible ways we could go. So we're gonna, um, there's, so we'll get random number three. And I'm gonna say if rnd equals equals zero, then we're going to turn, we'll turn right, so that would be 90. We start with zero because in programming we always count, start counting at zero. So if I say get random number three, that means the three outcomes are zero, one, or two. Then I'm going to say else if r and d equals equals one, then that means we're going to turn to the left, which would be negative 90. And then I'll just say else, if, if it's not zero or one, it's gonna be two, but I don't have to say else if R and D equals equals two, because if it's not zero or one, it must be two. So I can just say else right here. Then I can turn 180, which means go back the way I came. So that's the three things that could happen, okay? And so let me close this. and compile it. And I'm gonna put my cat in the world. And you'll notice he does just fine. He moves fairly randomly. Only problem when we come, when we come right there. Um, you'll notice that when he gets to the edge of the world, he doesn't, uh, we would really like him to do, because this is sort of a maze game like Pac-Man or whatever, we'd like him to wrap around to the other side. So I'm going to add a wrap at edge feature, which is going to make him go to the other side of the world. I actually did this before in my Fruit Wars game, but I'm going to go through and do it again since that was a while ago, and you can um, so you can see how I'd like to, how I can make an actor wrap at the edge of the world. So I'm going to do a method called private void wrap at edge. So this is something that's going to, at the edge of my world, make when I get, so basically what I'd like to do is when he gets to the right side of the world, we want him to pop out on the left side. If he gets to the top of the world, we want him to pop out on the bottom. So first of all, let's define what the right, left, top, and bottom are, okay? So int, um, so we'll, we'll say int top equals zero. Okay, so um, that's the, uh, the, the, y, uh, the y at the top is going to be equal zero and int left side equals zero. So um, now we have to, we want to know what is the right side and bottom of my world. So one thing I could do at this point is say, well, let's see how big my world is, right? I'm going to open up my world and I'll say, oh, look, 600 by 400. So I could say the right side of the world is 599 and the bottom is 399. But I'm not going to do it that way because um, 
what if I decide to make my world bigger? What if I decide to change my world? Anytime I do something like this, I'd like to make it so that if I change one part of my program, I don't screw up the rest. So I want to leave it open to the possibility that I might want to get the right side of the world, or I mean change the right the size of the world, and I'll still have the correct right side of the world. So I, what I want to do is I want to get in here what the size of the world is. So I'm going to say world, my world, equals get world and then I'm gonna say int int right side equals okay so it's going to be basically if my world is 600 wide then I'd like the right side of my world I when my cat reaches 599 I want to him to pop out over at zero okay so I'm gonna say int right side equals my world dot get width minus minus one and you might wonder what what's the minus one again reminders as we're programmers we always start counting at zero so if the left side of my world is zero and I count all the way up to the right side then the right the right side is going to be five zero through 599 that's 600 that the width of the world is 600 so the right pixel rightmost pixel is going to be 599. Okay, and now I want to get the bottom pixel of my world, so that's going to be the height of the world minus one, which would be, in this case, would be 399. So I'm gonna say int bottom equals my world get height minus one. Okay, so that's gonna get the bottom of the world, okay? Now I need to know where my cat is right now, so I'm gonna need to get the x and y coordinates Okay, so I'll say int x equals get x. So that's where my, the right side of where my, I mean the x, I mean the x coordinate of my cat, and int y equals get y. That's going to be the y coordinate of my cat. Now I'm gonna say if the x is less than or equal to the left side which is always gonna be zero. I didn't have to give this a variable, but I did anyway, just to make the code clearer to somebody who's looking at it. So if the X is left and or equal to the left side of the screen, then what I wanna do, and I'm not gonna put curly brackets after this if statement, since I'm only doing one operation after it, I don't need to uh, enclose it in curly brackets. I'm just gonna indent it. I'm gonna set the location. So if I was on the left side, I want to move to the right side. And the Y is going to stay the same. So I'm going to set the location to the right side of the screen and whatever Y I am currently on. And now I'm going to say if the X is greater than or equal to the right side of the screen, then I want to set the location to the left side of the screen and whatever Y I currently am on. So that's going to take care of wrapping on the left or right side. Okay, and now we're gonna do the same thing with the Y. If the Y is less than or equal to the top of the screen, then I want to set the location to the bottom I mean, I'm, I'm, whatever the x coordinate currently is and the bottom of the screen, right? So in this case, the y is going to change from top to bottom and the x will stay the same. And if the x, I mean, the y is greater than or equal to the bottom of the screen, I want to set the location for, uh, to whatever my current X is and the top of the screen. And this is going to make my cat wrap to the other side of the screen. So now that I have my uh, method, all I have to do is make sure and call it at the end of my act method. So I'm just gonna do, if I do control space, wrap at edge will now be one of my choices. There it is. 
so that's just going to make sure that it actually it actually checks to to move me at the end of the thing. Um, to make things a little easier, I'm going to make sure my cat's right here so you can see him. That uh, I'm, I'll compile him. Um, I'll move my cat so he's actually facing the edge of the world so you can actually see him uh, cross over to the other side. And there he goes. You can see him. Um, and sooner or later he'll probably cross over to the top, but you can see how it works. Um, I'll just move him up here just so you can see him cross to the top. Uh, the last thing I want to do is just make it so that the cat can eat the mouse. Of course, uh, it's a fairly easy thing to do. Um, I'm just going to say um, uh, actor mouse equals get. Um, I'm just going to be get one intersecting get one intersecting object mouse dot class, and if mouse not equal null, that is we're on a mouse, then we're going to uh, want to get the world and then um, my world dot and then we're going to use the remove object mouse, which is the mouse that we got. So that'll actually make sure that if he catches the mouse, um, he will remove him. And, uh, oh, and actually, so one more thing to make it fair for the mouse, we should let the mouse wrap at the edge too. So let's just finish this up and make sure, put the wrap, I'm going to copy the wrap at edge method into the mouse. So now the mouse, and I'll use the rapid edge method up here in my act, at the end of my act method. So my mouse can also wrap at the edge. And now we have a complete playable game here. Let's compile it and run it. Oh, there he is, he got me. Yikes! Well, now we have a complete playable game, but we're still gonna add one more thing to it, which I'll show you in my next lesson. I'll see you then.